2020 was a rough year for everyone. Let's let Legacy Financial help you. Last year was a tough year. However, staying positive, keeping your faith, and continuing to work hard is the goal. If you're in financial struggle at the moment and you need some help, if you're doing it well and you want to get to, to the next level, either way, give them a call. Also, if you're looking for a new opportunity to learn for yourself and earn more money part-time, give them a call also. Call AO at 510-928-2104 to book your appointment today. Andrew and AO are just two people on a mission to help families build a legacy. So let's get in the number is 510-928-2104. You also can find on social media at Twitter at legacy underscore uncut or Instagram at Sam's underscore uncut. A lot of surprises going on in the world of basketball, especially in the NBA and college basketball. So we discuss everything like that. And also Shaq and Coach K challenging the younger guard. That and all that more on Fast Break here on IA Sports Radio, your direct feed for that is all is sports. And join us as you shout, ladies and gentlemen, on a championship Sunday on the NFL side. And I know one Mr. Duntarius Locke is a very happy man right now. How you doing tonight, sir? I am on level 20 and a half right now. <laughs> so um, everything is all good right now. I'm like basically cried after the clock hit zero. Um, first team to ever host and play in the Super Bowl. <sighs> it's been it's a great feeling, man. Uh, things are going, you know, everything's on up and up right now, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Been prepped for the show. Watched, you know, that bus game and Pax game in full. And, you know, I thought, you know, first half, Bucks looking great. And then... Second half, Brady started throwing picks and stuff. I said, like, ooh. Ooh. I was like, yeah. I hope they ain't trying to trick it off. And then <sighs> Aaron Rodgers and his head coaches, they seem like they don't get agree on stuff and kind of cost him at the end. Yeah, big time. Um, pretty sure a lot of people have seen it, but I know it was that play, I think third and goal threw it you know, in the middle to Devontae Adams. He had a clear lane on the right side. You know, he could have ran that in. Uh, so, but again, I mean, what is that? Aaron Rodgers' first you know, home uh, host NFC championship. He's been to a few of them. So, uh, but, you know, uh, Tom Brady showed, showed up, you know, a couple, couple clutch moments. And the defense played very good to me. Uh, when they needed to. I mean, Tom Brady threw three picks and uh, the defense, you know, held him to six points. So, very pleased with that. I know, yeah. It, it's it's wild. I mean, it's wild for your team to get there. So, congrats, 
Congrats to you, sir. Salute to the Bucks to get into the um, Super Bowl for the first time since 2002, I believe. Is that correct? Yep, against the Raiders. So, um, so, so, congrats to them on that. You you, you oh, gonna yeah. you 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 gonna go down there to Tampa, are you? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I got to, man. I got to, A. Hey, I'm from Tampa. The Super Bowl is in Tampa. And my <laughs> team is playing in the Super Bowl. I got to be. Um, I got to be down there at least. You know, watch it with some family members. Uh, my sister's probably going to host a party or a Super Bowl party. So, got to show my face. I hear that. I hear that. But before we get started, uh, thank you for, to Andrew uh, Herrenbar on Today's earlier show on here on iSports Radio, hosting the soccer sh- uh, scoreboard show. Um, learn some interesting things about, you know, how some of these teams on the European side, how they go about acquisitions, all that stuff. So, you know, shout out to Andrew. He did a great job today. And then I will tune in, be, and hopefully I'll be tuning in next week along with me um, on that. But D Lock, the NBA season is still trucking along as much as possible. Ah, uh, we gotta talk about the Nets again. A week or so has passed. You know, we see you know Kyrie in the fold with the other two of Harden and Durant. But you had one of the surprise teams in the NBA. The Cavs beat them. And spoiled that, you know, they debut. What are your thoughts of those three being the fold now and how they look, you know, chemistry wise during that week? Uh, they don't I mean, it's gonna take them a while to get together. Um this offense that they're running seems like it's just going to be a, a high scoring offense, fast pace. Um, we got Steve Nash and Mike D'Antoni there. Uh, so, you know, I think Amar, Amir Stoudemire is, is, is also there as well to, as a, as an assistant. So uh, to me, you know, they got to start clicking at some point, maybe down the road. Um, but it, this, one thing I know about this team is it's going to be high scoring against this team. Their their games are going to be high scoring every game. Um, it seems like they don't play any defense. Um, Colin Sexton was out there cooking with high grease um, the first game. Uh, I've seen a couple highlights where first they had Kyrie on them and then they put Kevin Durant on them and then they hell had even Jeff Green on. Them. So uh, for me, you know, I think that. This team can gel, but this team looks like they have no defense and they can hurt them in the future. Um, they let, I believe Cleveland wasn't looking that good on off- offensively until they played them. Um, so it's going to take them time to get together, but I do believe that uh, this team is going to be good down the road. But as far as the pecking order of the shots, that's going to be uh, the biggest problem. I see them have. Yeah, for me, the Nets, you know, with Kyrie, you know, back from his sabbatical, you see Harden more in that point guard role compared to Kyrie. That's one thing I kind of, you know, notice with them that Kyrie, I mean, not Kyrie, but James Harden was in that, that point guard role which I think he's really accustomed to, you know, against the Bucks, you know, he had 34 and 12 and KD had 30. But we know, you know, he can find that open man, find that assist and, you know, keep that ball moving or get those guys in the right place. And then, you know, you jump to that double overtime game against the Cavs of all three guys involved. Yeah, Kyrie had 37. Yeah, Durant had 38. 
But James Harden had triple double with twelve assists in tow. But I mean, I'm glad you brought up the defense part. You know, them train ran Jared Allen. It started to look like it's kind of it's it's going to haunt them. Yep. In a double overtime, overtime game, DeAndre Jordan only played 24 minutes. 24 minutes, and where everybody else averaged over 30 to uh, uh, five or guys that fired over uh, 40 minutes in that game. If that's the big man you're going to keep in the fold, um, he got to suck it up, Buttercup. Yeah. My my in my eyes, and you know, Terrence. Shout out to Terrence Rodriguez in the chat. Thank you, sir, for being here. You know, Terrence saying, you know, I don't. He said, I don't have the Nets making the Eastern Conference Finals. It's a round two exit. I don't necessarily agree with that. I think with the talent in in full with them, I I still got them going to at least the Eastern Conference Finals. Unless somebody really trips them up in the second round, who I don't know. Unless they get like a bad matchup with the 76ers. With it with the way Joel and B has been playing right now. But you know, if Durant getting rest times after like a big night games and stuff like that, you know, this team may be hurting come down the line and you know and Terrence prediction may come true get the wrong matchup and you know have a lot of continuity you may put out be put out in the second round yeah quick too and that's and the east is not I mean if you look at the teams you know you have a couple solid teams up in up in the east right now so um you don't want to see Philly right now to be honest with you mm mm-hmm. And then, you know, going over uh, Saturday, I mean, not Saturday's game. Um, uh, yeah, Saturday's game gets the heat. You know, they revered the storm from Bam Adebayo. Him having a 41-point game, nine-assist game. But, you know, that center position is going to be trouble. DeAndre Jordan, 21 point. I mean, 21 minutes. I mean, granted, yeah, he had eight points, eight rebounds, but you 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 got to at least play him at least thirty a game. Twenty five to thirty, he's got to be getting that every day. Yeah, you got Jeff Green, who's very versatile, but you don't know which Jeff Green you're gonna get at times. Yeah, he, he's inconsistent, very inconsistent now. When people talk about, about potential in pro sports within the last decade, his name comes up with a host of others. But you can't, I mean, you see Nash and crew, you can't have that mentality. Yeah, I mean, for me, I just feel like this team is they're gonna make a big diff, a make make a big push, um, but it's just, you know, you want them to get the chemistry at the right time, and once they get the chemistry, I think um, things will go uh, well. But remember now, you know, at some point, Kyrie was, uh, you know, the best player on the team. Now I think he triggered down to the third best player. So uh, I, I want to see how that kind of plays out. Um, and you know, this team has has been in some couple tight games. They got, you know, it, some, it seems like sometimes they find a way to close a game. But uh, I think the problem will come is when the, when they're deciding who's going to close the game. Very true. And you know, they got the heat again on the twenty fifth, which is tomorrow. 
So we'll see if they be, build up a little streak. And after that, they got the Hawks, who's kind of looking, I mean, I say looking suspect, but, you know, they kind of, we kind of had higher hopes for them. And they, even with, you know, their big free agent acquisitions being out, some of the guys we kind of, like Trey Young, Trey Young, he kind of really has been disappointing so far this year. Yeah. Not a lot of pop from him that we have seen since he has come to the league. I mean, the scoring threat is still there with him, but it's just like, uh, I'm not seeing it, man. I mean, it's, it's like he's not playing the defensive side. He's not doing too much on defense. I mean, he's scoring, but, you know, we're not seeing him make that big impact on defense. So, uh, I, I feel like the Hawks have a lot of pieces um, there. Maybe they bring in Rondo to help Trey Young with the defensive side. Uh, so, for me, you know, there's a there's a lot that can be done with this, this Hawks team. And they have to live up to the, the expectations. I mean, you got Clint Capella there. I think he's playing him a good as well. So, uh, but again, back to the Nets. Um, hopefully they do get pretty far because I think, you know, with this three that they have, you don't get too far. Now somebody has to take the blame. Yeah, and sadly, that blame will probably go to the head coach. Oh, yeah, of course. But before we move off the Nets, let me ask you this. Can you see them trading Kyrie? I'm not necessarily in this season. I, I think they'll ride this out, see how it goes. But do you see them possibly trading Kyrie and and trading him and filling out that roster better? Um, well, that's a tough question, boy. I don't think so. I mean, I think they actually keep him. I think the reason they have, they're, I think they're building off the three that they have. Um, let's not forget that they have been with him, but that's for next year. Um, they could, but... I just don't see them getting rid of, you know, Kyrie this soon. I think that, you know, they feel like he was one of the ones that got Kevin Durant to come there and then also agreed on James Harden to get there. So uh, it's going to be kind of, you know, kind of interesting how they have it set up. But they're going to rely on those three to get as far as, you know, as, to win the title. So um, we'll just see if it works. But they're going to run into, again, bigs eat on them big time. Bigs destroy them. So uh, I think that's going to be something that they can possibly think about, you know, in the offseason or before the offseason, you know, try to pick up. But they've made so many trades. You know, they had somebody in the, in the, the bid that they could have built around. But uh, we'll see. I mean, it's going to be uh, very interesting to see how that, how that unfolds, especially with Kyrie, because – like I said, the, the the biggest problem is going to be the pecking order of, you know, who uh, gets to take the most shots. You know, it seems like they're kind of running that Houston-type offense when they had Russ and James Harden, where one is taking a shot this quarter and the other one is taking a shot this quarter. Uh, so um, I don't know how long that's going to last, but uh, the fact that they're not playing on defense is going to hurt them big time. And Kyrie is like, Somebody that's not helping that. So, yeah. So, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we'll see how everything shakes up for the Nets. I think, you know, as long as Kyrie's in the right state of mind, as long as KD, I mean, they kind of regulate KD pretty well. I think James Harden would be fine. I think, you know, we'll, we'll see how things shake out for them. You know, in the East, I mean, they're standing. I mean, they stand in fifth place right now, with Cleveland behind them. Atlanta at number seven. The Knicks at eight, nine. Surprising. What are your quick thoughts on the Knicks, real quick? They're shocking. Um, you know, they're shocking me. I mean, I, I was expecting um, them to not be 
I didn't think they were going to be this good. Tom Thibodeau is a defensive, deep, a defensive coach, and we see that with how he has, you know, his guys playing. So uh, for me, um, Julius Randle is playing like out of his world right now. So um, I, I, I think that this is going to be something that is very good to watch for. Um, they have a couple young pieces, and Obi Toppin as well. Um, RG Baird is playing out of his mind as well. So it, it, it like this is going to be something that um, have to watch for. I think not just for now, but even in the future. Yeah, the Knicks, special especially Randall, who I mean, granted the All Star game is not happening this year, but he'll be on the, the list of players that will probably be voted in by the coaches. For the way he's playing, R.J. Barrett, who is averaging uh, 18 points a game so far this year, but has shot the ball better than he did last year. That's a big plus for them this year. How they succeeded, have it, have been succeeding this year. So the combination of those two guys, you know, playing very well, has done wonders for this team. You know, Mitch Robinson. You know, early in his career, you know, he has some great games stat wise, but you know, he'll foul out and get a lot of foul trouble. Right. And I think, you know, and I think, you know, with um with Thibodeau in the fold, I think he um Sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. People call me and, you know, stuff happens. It's like, come on. Let's see. Are you there, D-Lock? Let's see if I can get him back. Are you there? Yes, the East. I was saying the East has just gotten a lot deeper. Oh, yes. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. I had a call come through and interrupt it. But I'll wrap it up with the Knicks with this. You know, one positive, well, a couple positive for Timbo being there with the Knicks. You know, harnessing that defensive ability of Mitch Robinson. Get getting that holding that holding, holding that craft of him, so he be that anchor that he had with jo- Joe Kim Noah. You know, a young Joe Kim Noah, and if he could translate like you know Noah did when he did with him in Chicago to here with Mitchell Robinson to the Knicks, that would go a very long way with that team. Yeah, I think they like a dynamic point guard away. For being a, a real legit like, contender, yeah, I, know. yeah. I mean, they like I said, they got a couple pieces there. You know, Andre Baird looks like a stud. And you know, I can see why they were interested in um, in Chris Paul. Maybe they fall at a point guard away from really contending. But I think you need like a young stud in there to kind of really grow with the team and and be like a you know a key cog for the future. You know, who would that be? I don't know. But I think there's something I mean, I know they've been looking for that, but that's something really to consider down the line. Which I thought they maybe would have went that route in the draft. You know, I said take it over topped him, but you know, we'll see. But you know, another surprise for me so far in the NBA season, besides the Knicks, 
but kind of like a, you know, a negative way, so to speak, the Miami Heat. You know, the Miami Heat, they, I don't know what's going on with them. I know Jimmy Butler's been out. And he's like the heart and soul of that team. Literally. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, okay, even with Butler out, you still have other pieces there. And I know Tyler Hero missing games and whatnot. You know, as well. But you figured, okay, Bam Adebayo still in the mix. Duncan Robinson in the mix as well. And especially with Tyler Hero out, he'll be getting those three-point shots, opportunities you know, headed headed this way. Gordon Dragic still in the fold. Kirchner Nunn come off the bench. Iguodala getting that veteran experience. You would think, you know, they'd still be solid team, but, you know, it just kind of had been looking right for them. Yeah. I mean, to me, um, I'm thinking maybe it had to do with the fact that they just were literally playing in October. I don't know how how that is affecting them big time, but obviously you take the court, it doesn't matter. Um, but Jimmy Butler's impact is huge, as we see. Uh, I think Gabe Vincent has been getting a lot of run. Um, you know, he's been playing a little role for them a little bit. Drogic seems like he's playing a little bit as well. Uh, but Kendrick Nunn is is a person also that just like last year, he was getting a lot of men early, so they kind of leaning on that. Uh, but I think it just shows us how big of an impact Jimmy Butler is. I mean, it just seems like this team, they're literally going from like having a very good defense last year to having the worst defense in the NBA at this moment. One of the worst. So, um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, and this is the reason why, uh, again, when they play the Nets um, tomorrow, um, this game will be high scoring again because both teams just are lacking defense. So, uh, but I think this is really based off the fact that or play a huge role in the fact that Jimmy Butler is not uh, there or hasn't been there. Yeah, we'll see how Jimmy Butler comes back and affects his team. I think, you know, it'll go a long way how this team performs. You know, Kendrick Nunn has been playing very nice off the bench. You know, Hopefully that, you know, run continues for him. You know, Gabe Vincent, another uh, guard who's getting a lot of time with Tyler Hero being out. So, you know, he's getting some time to shine. Another, you know, undrafted find by, you know, this Heat staff for USSB. So, you know, if, if, if this guy could come in, and show we can prove he could be a nice rotation piece down the line. You know, and Avery Bradley, who ain't really played that much. Yeah, as you know, a guy we kind of envisioned having a big role with his team, but he's nowhere to be found at the moment. Yeah, this team is just to me, they take the drop back. Um but I think they'll get it. I think they'll get it together. Another team I, that's kind of shocking to me, but I mean, you called them to be bad this year. Anyway, is the Minnesota Timberwolves. Like, I'm not understanding why this team is just all over the place. Um, we got a, a lot of pieces there. Now, obviously, it's a big shocker the fact that they went and got a uh, Rubio, but I mean, we barely seen a lot from Carlton in time. I think he did have COVID. Um, and then D'Lo is just, I don't know. I mean, this, this team is just in shambles to me right now. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just didn't see nothing from, Minis- from the Minnesota Timberwolves all season wise. I don't know. Like you said, you don't know which way they're going. I mean, Anthony Edwards, you know, he has had some very nice games earlier in the season. 
But, you know, that play is kind of fizzle for the, you know, at the moment. You know, Malik Beasley seems like the only real consistent cog on that team. D'Lo, he didn't, I think, I don't think he even played against the Pelicans. You know, even though they won by 10 points. And then, um, even with Towns being out. And, you know, Towns being out for those two weeks with COVID didn't help. And then he missed the beginning of the season as well. Didn't help. So, if you don't got those two guys consistently in the offense and Russell and that Towns, you ain't doing nothing. Right. You're not. And then, I, I, I didn't know Ed Davis was still in the league. He had 19 minutes against the Pelicans. So it's gonna be it's gonna be rough for Minnesota, but also D Lock. But keep in mind, their first round pick for this upcoming draft class that's gonna be a lot stronger than last year's draft class goes to Golden State. Oh wow! Yeah, that's right. And you talking about a loaded draft class with a lot of wings on there, like a K. Cunningham, uh, the kid from Stanford, uh, Silva, I believe. Uh, who else I'm thinking about right now? Oh, there's some other pieces out there as well. Trent Marford from LSU. A big guy can score inside out. Mm-hmm. Um, jeez, Baylor got some couple nice guys as well. Yeah, they do. Yeah. So if that pick ends up number one, number two over Wall, and it goes out to Golden State, Steve Kerr and crew are sitting pretty right now. Yep. For the future. I mean, for the future. They're building. Uh, they have a couple pieces there. Uh, Wiseman's been playing pretty good, even though I think he's being shuffled, you know, with the bigs that they have there already. Mind you, uh, Marquise Chris has not been playing. So, uh, but they got, you know, that was a good move by Golden State. And it's just like, you know, the Timberwolves, you know, you had the opportunity to get the mellow. So, um, and you chose Anthony Edwards, which is, you know, not a bad piece, but it's just like, you know, you, you go and trade for Rubio, who I, I'm not, I'm not sure what he's, what he's been doing really, uh, what that move was about. But, um, you know, I had this team actually making some improvements this year with Carl Anthony Towns and, and been disappointed so far. Yeah, this is like, and we talked about this during the draft. Like, I mean, getting Rubio is nice, but, you know, the way Lamelo has been playing, getting very involved, everybody involved, being dynamic and stuff like that, having more pop to his game, there, Rubio. I, I just kind of went with the guy with the better potential. In my eyes. Yeah, I mean, Ruby isn't going to be jacking up shots like a LaMelo, but if LaMelo could go to his own, and, you know, going Hayward mentioned that, you know, he he sees LaMelo being like a, like a Luka Doncic type, then if, if he grows into that type of player, then and it depends what happens with Anthony Edwards, but if he goes in that type of player, then Minnesota, you'd be questioning Minnesota from here to eternity, like we do with the uh, Sacramento Kings. Taking Marvin Bagley over Luka Doncic. So, you know, 
So we'll see how you know it shakes up for Minnesota. I mean, they, they did win against the Pelicans um, the other day, like we mentioned. So we'll we'll see how things turn out for them. They got a big matchup against the Warriors on the 25th. So big game right there that I think Golden State we're trying to go out and trying to win and keep Minnesota down that pecking order. But before I we yeah. Yeah. Before we continue, ladies and gentlemen, get a shout out to one of our other sponsors. Mom is always right. Media. Are you feeling overwhelmed with schoolwork? Those essays keep you up at night. Don't lose sleep. Just pick up the phone. Mom is is always right. Writing agency will give you quality essays and we always make our and we always make our deadlines. Sleep soundly knowing we're on the job. For more, for more information, call 626-653-3649. Boy, I wish I had them around while I was in school. Another sponsor. It goes down to PM. Podcast on Mom is Always Right Media. Make sure you check out the new episode of It Goes Down to PM, brought to you by Mom is Always Right Media, where we help you open your business from start to finish. Also, another shout out to our another sponsor of ours, Coffee After Dark, a podcast within the Mama's Right Media spectrum. Don't miss the next chapter of our favorite story. Check out the season two premiere of Coffee After Dark, brought to you by Mama's All Right Media, where it help you open your business from start to finish. So. Shaq D Lock. Shaq has always been an instigator since he's been, well, hell, since his senior year in high school. When he told Dick Vitale, you know, during the um Madonna's All American game, watch out for me. And then you go to college and stuff like that, being snubbed by David Robinson. For picking him over the USA team in '96, and he held that grudge against against him. And then you know his rap albums, he talked about everybody like Sean Kemp and all that stuff. And you know, you go to the new generation now. His favorite targets: Javale McGee, Dwight Howard. And now his latest victim is um, Ruby Gobert because he's mad at Ruby Gobert getting two hundred million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's true. I, I, I mean, it's funny, but I mean, it's true. Like, bro, why you count somebody else's pockets, man? I know. You got paid, you know, when you was at uh in L.A. or what you. They count the man's pockets, man. Got paid and made a lot of money off endorsements. A lot. But Shaq, you know, he says stuff on the sly. And, you know, he says some things to um, Donovan Mitchell post game after uh, inside the NBA. In Shaq's words, he said, to Donovan Mitchell, he doesn't have what it takes to get to the next level. Mm. To Donovan Mitchell, if y'all didn't see or, or hear about that, Donovan Mitchell in a split screen, this says simply, "All right," and that was it. What we talked about this, you know, a couple of days ago. When that happened, why well, I sent you that video. Do you think Shay was trying to like motivate or just throwing shade? Um that's just tough. I mean, I understand him saying like, you know, speaking up like that, but um I would say it's throwing shade. 
but we've seen Shaq do this before. I, I've always thought that Shaq was doing some of this just to pick up some attention, you know, with Javel McGee. But that's just him. You know, that's just who he is. He's going to speak up and, and speak his mind. So uh, for me, um, I think it's the fact that he did come back and say, hey, you know, I just wanted to hear that from you. Um, maybe that's just what he thought. And being the fact that he thought that already, he felt the need to come back and say it, you know. So uh, out in the open and to say it too, Donald Mitchell. So uh, for me, I, I felt like it could have been a better approach. But it just seemed like he felt as if he had to just say it out in the open, you know. And can't, I, I would say it was shade, but man, Shaq has been doing this for a while, man. And, you know, I, I, he's going to be that kind of person. So, but I, like I said, again, you know, watching his pockets is, watching somebody, uh, JaVale McGee's, uh, not JaVale McGee, Go, Goldberg's pockets is another, another thing I just thought was kind of, you know, weird. But, I mean, even if you watch the you know, NBA, NBA on TNT between him and Chuck, like both of them are always going back and forth. You know, so I don't think it's necessarily him picking on Donovan Mitchell or singling him out, but I just think that that's just who Shaq is, and you know, that's not gonna, he's not gonna change. Yeah, he, he always had a funny way of interacting with people. He always has. You know, you know, his comments to Mitchell, I, I took them as like, are you trying to motivate the dude, or or, you know, are you trying to, like, throw shade at him kind of like towards the to, uh, Gobert? Because, you know, you know, Gobert is not going to help you out. He's just a defensive guy getting paid $200 million. So you got to <laughs> shorter that load to make your team do something. I mean, uh, win something. You know, Utah right now, they're 12-4, and four, the third in the West. Mitchell's been playing great. You know, Gobert, he does, you know, you know what he does. You know, I, I kind of wish you see, we see more from the, from the role players per se. You know, look in last game, Mitchell had 23 points. Gobert had 11 points, 14 rebounds. Mike Conley has 17 points, you know, one assist, which you think it should be better. Bonovich had 14 and 8, 7 rebounds, so good stat line for him. Rose O'Neal, 9 points. And do get paid $36 million. Joe, mm-hmm. Joe Ingles, I think he get paid more than Rose O'Neal, and he don't, he don't do crap at all. Yeah, Joe Engel, boy, he just sitting on the on the bench, just hey, picking up a check, man. And then you know Jordan Clarkson, I like, but it seemed like you know he tries to do too much every time. It's like, damn, dude, you, you shooting at the wrong times and all that stuff. You forced it in there. Kind of like I was watching this this high school girls basketball game last night. You know, one girl get the ball, boom, they driven all down the all the way to court, and not seeing three other teammates open on the wing. But anyways, getting off subject. But Derek Warren, a guy I never got Derek uh, favors. My bad, never got that paid like good money too. I mean, nine and eight from the bench, fourteen minutes. You know, not bad production for that time minutes, but you expect more for this team in my eyes. But I, I just don't know where Shaq is getting this from. I, I, I help me out here. I was just like, we, we know Mitchell can score. We know what he can do. But I mean, I know Shaq kind of recognized that, you know, got the Lakers and 
Clippers to contend with also, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you got other teams like the Nuggets slowly making their way back up in the standings. A team that Utah should have put out in that first round last year. Yeah. On the game seven, yep. You know, we don't know what that was going to look like with Kristoff being in and out the lineup. That's another team right now. Phoenix. Ugh. If Devin Booker can keep that card, um, that Jenner girl away from her, away from him, and get his mind, mind right back in basketball, I think Phoenix would be a dangerous team to look out for. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that when they got Chris Paul over there, it was going to be a problem. Then they messed around and picked up Jay Crowder, who played outstanding in his first, you know, starting game. Um, they're going to be a big, a big play as well. I think like second, I think they're third right now behind the Clippers and the Lakers. Talking about Utah? Uh, 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 Phoenix. No, no, Utah is number three. Phoenix is number seven oh. in the standings. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, I thought it was. I think it was like four or five games above five hundred at one point. They were, but you know, Booker's the way I've been watching injured. them injured, and then you know his score. I mean, his scoring is there. It's just like I, I think his mind is at other places right now. Yeah, yeah, he don't, yeah. I get what you're saying. Mind totally somewhere else. Chris Paul got to talk to him. Well, you don't want Chris Paul talking to you. Oh, no. He, That's be, why you got to get right early. But you know Chris Paul's coming in, so you knew you had to get your mind right. And, and well, you got a Chris Paul at the tail end of his career. You better get your mind right. Because Chris Paul, well, actually, yeah. you know, Blake Griffin was sitting there doing that type of mess with Chris Paul's there in L.A. Dating those, uh, dating the Jenna girl and stuff like that. If I remember correctly. I believe so. I know he was dating somebody, but I know it was kind of in this messing up his game, basically, and, and Played a huge part, and Chris Paul was having none of that. Yep. And Chris Paul got tired of that stuff, and then count and on top of that, going out every second round didn't help matters. So you get fed up with that stuff. I know he won't go for this BS again with Booker. So no, right? You know, you know, we'll see. But that, back to Shaq real quick. I hope, I'll say this in Shaq's defense, I hope he was just motivating the Donovan Mitchell. I hope he was. And, you know, and Mitchell can turn that to a positive. Mike Conley, you know, saying to the you know in defense of Donovan Mitchell, you don't understand why Shaq said that. So, I just hope Shaq, I don't know, I think Shaq just got to use his words right to, you know, have proper dialogue with these players. Because it seems like every time it comes off like an attack on these guys. He's always on the, it's like he's always on the, on the defend, on the defend for some reason. So, I mean, to me, uh, it seems like he, he takes offense. You know, it's like he wants a little bit more respect. And don't forget now, you know, Shaq mm-hmm. was winning titles with Kobe. So, you know, he's always hearing that, oh, without Kobe, you know, Shaq wouldn't have his dreams or he went to Miami, he had to have the way, all this extra stuff. So hearing all of that, now it's like he wants to spotlight a little bit on him uh, just a little bit, which is uh, kind of, you know, Kind of weird right now, especially he's done everything he's done in his, you know, his career, and exact and to be exactly what he's doing right now too. 
Yeah, I mean, like it, it's very weird. They, you know, of all the success he's had in his career, how much money he made playing wise and off the court, and still does after off the court. It still amazes me. He still kind of charged at these younger guys like that. But I, D Lock, before we head out, I do want to get your thoughts on Coach K. Louisville beat them the other day, yet last night, 70 to 65, dropping the Blue Devils to 5 and 5. This ain't been one Coach K's proudest season so far for, for his years at Duke. And, you know, we've seen, you know, in interview clips of him that he don't seem very happy right now. It's like that if he asks a question, if he asks a question from reporters or whatever, he kind of like snaps at him. You know, after the loss to Illinois, he kind of snapped at folks in a sense and kind of like, you know, pulled his team out, you know, rest of um, non-conference play. Until you know ACC play started. Well, a student uh, reporter, I guess, for Duke or for Duke or whatever, I guess asked him a question, and he kind of. He he said, you know, playing Louisville is the equivalent of taking the the tough e contest in the world. What, what what are your thoughts on that? And then and plus, is the Duke season the 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 way Duke has been playing this season has that affected his attitude? Compounded with the pandemic, because he's one of those folks that, you know, we shouldn't be playing and stuff like that, which is, he's right to, to believe that. Yeah. But I think if things were going his way, well, if the team is going, if things are going right with the team, they're top five in the country, I don't think he'd be snapping at the head of these reporters. What are your thoughts on that? Um, for one, I think Coach K just seems like he's ready to just be done with the season. Um, yeah, you no, know, he's t- it just seems like he's already checked out. Um, I think for me, uh, you know, reporters, the tough thing about it is reporters, they're doing a lot of these interviews, asking these questions, not just for their story, but for fans that would like to just know some of these things. So, um, to snap at them. You know, it's kind of like you have throwing a kind of a shade to the fans. So uh, for me, I, I think that, you know, that's something that needs to be watched for. And it's not he's not the only person to do it. I mean, we've seen Bill Belichick go to interviews. and it's, It literally looks like he doesn't want to be there. Um, Greg Popovich, you know, same thing. He does interviews, you know, halfway through games. And it's like he's saying these less smart ass comments. To where it's like, you know, it may be some questions that fans have. So I think they have need to have a, a, a different way of approaching, uh, you know, these questions. And Coach K just seems like he's, you know, he's out of it. Because I don't even think we've actually seen him do this and more of his interviews before this. I mean, remember, this was the coach of Olympic te- a, a lot of Olympic teams. So he's done, you know, multiple interviews, you know. You know, so mm-hmm. for it to be what it is now, there has to be a purpose behind this. And it just seems like he's, he's tapped out. You know, for the Bill Bel- for me, Bill Belgian and Greg Popovich, I'll say this. At least they're consistent of them not wanting to talk to the media and stuff like that and stabbing back at reporters. At least they're consistent in that win and lose. And I know those two coaches have done a lot of winning. Along with Coach K. But for Coach K, though, 
like I alluded to, you know, beforehand, it's like if they were in the top three in the country, you know, playing very well, averaging 80 points a game, Dick Vitale serenading them like he always does. I think you get a, lot, a lighter mood from him. You know, it seemed like, yeah, I mean, like to me, I just go ahead. I, this is like this year, you know, you got a lot of people, you know, kind of clapping back what he said, uh, you know, where he has said this season. You know, NATO's Alabama, you know, you know, asking a question about Coach K and he answered back, you know, critic, almost like criticizing Coach K until they, you know, they, Forcing him to apologize. So, a lot of blowback from Coach K this year. You know, a lot of people stuck up for that, you know, student reporter too. You know, which he, you know, he didn't need that, you know, blowback from Coach K like that. But, you know, Duke being out of the Rakins. You know, the pressure to succeed right now. They're usually one of the better teams. I mean, we're talking about a team that is consist- consistently, you know, winning, you know, a lot of games. So uh, for them to be looking how they are now, you know, he's he's feeling that pressure. I mean, you look at the top of the ACC right now, you know, Virginia at the top, no surprise there. FSU. At top, no surprise there. Virginia Tech, five and two in the conference play, looking so good, looking good so far. Louisville, five and two so far. Pitt, Jeff Capel, former former Coach K understudy, former head man of Oklahoma, got his team four and two right now, and you know him taking that job. You know, I thought that was going to be like a long rebuild, but he's done a trem- tremendous job, a tremendous job up at Pitt. So shout out to Jeff Capel there. UNC, they five and three. Georgia Tech, three and two in conference play. And then you get to Duke at three and three. Syracuse, Clemson, who, who's ranked number 20 in the country, who should drop out when the new coaches poll, AP, AP poll come out. And then you just go down, NC State, Notre Dame, Miami, Wake Forest at 1-6. They should have as well kept Danny Manning in Boston College at 1-6. So, I, I I can see it. You got about damn seven teams ahead of you in the conference standings. Yeah, which is not the norm for them. We don't usually see that from uh, – from Duke. So this is something that is, you know, a lot different, which is, like I said, this is where he's feeling that pressure a little bit. But that still doesn't give him a reason to, you know what I'm saying, flip on, uh, just be flipping on people. Like, I don't, I don't bother with that. Well, hopefully, you know, they start winning games and stuff like that. And he get right in the right back of mind. Maybe. We'll see. You know, they got Georgia Tech here on the 26th. So, you know, that's a game right there that at home, too. That's a game right there that if you win, okay, you try to build some confidence yourself going in against Clemson on the 30th. But if you lose, you fall back in those standings. And you're going against a, you know, a, a good, a, a good Clemson team, a good Clemson team. You know, they play very slow, which I I, I can't stand when teams play slow like that. It, it drives me nuts. But nevertheless, a good team in Clemson. So. You come out and talk against Georgia Tech, cool, looking good. If you don't, and then you play 
against a slow paced Clemson team, then you kind of looking, ooh, I don't know. It's going to be tough in the trenches for Duke. And then you flip over to February. If you don't pick up that win on February 1st against Miami, before you play against uh, NC, then I don't know what... I, <laughs> Coach K is going to be looking sad in the face. Yeah, I mean, he's already... Well, he's already in a tough... He's already kind of bothered now, so just imagine. So, we see how things shake up for Coach K and crew. You know... At a younger age, I really didn't like Duke and Coach K and all that stuff in particular. But I think as I got older, you know, you kind of see how, you know, you see things in a different light and you get older. And it's like, okay, I kind of appreciate what this guy has done and the way he's done his program and all that. And kind of you know, transition, transition with the times and stuff like that. And especially, you know, you mentioned like the Team USA stuff. That brought that brought a lot of you know coolness to him per se. Then he pre- or cred that he previously didn't have in a sense. Yeah. Yes, he can coach. Yeah, he can recruit and win championships. But you know, him vibing with NBA players, winning back that gold medal, bringing back to the states, all that stuff. You you. And him then using that, transforming his recruiting, you know, ways, grabbing the one and done players like Joe Lee Okafor, Robbie Parker, Brandon Ingram, you know, and others, you know, has yeah. gained me a lot of respect for Duke. And now, in terms, in today's eyes, a lot of people don't hate on Duke like that, like they used to. Yeah. I mean, it seemed like Kentucky took a lot of that. You know, they were playing you know, pretty good for a while. So, uh, but like I said, for me, um, the fact that they are not, not playing at that usual level that they are, this is what we're getting from Coach K. So, you know, we'll see how things, you know, shake out for Duke. I said, the ACC is tough. It's a tough conference. There's a basketball conference. So you you're gonna get those you're gonna get those battles each day in, day out. But the goal is some scores real quick today, ladies and gentlemen, on the women's side of things. Um LSU was close to knocking off South Carolina, number fourteen in the country. They were up on halftime on them, but, you know, I think this talent won, won out at the end with uh, South Carolina uh, women's team. And they won by four points against LSU. So South Carolina still stay 12 and 1. Aaliyah Boston had 20 points for South Carolina. You know, 8 for 5, 8 for 15 for shooting. So, you know, Good job for them for like avoiding the upset there. Wake Forest, speaking of never upset, potential upset. Wake Forest almost upset at LSU today, 65 63. So another, you know, middle of the road conference, you know, teams like Wake Forest and LSU challenging the top dogs in the conference. But LSU, I mean, Louisville won. They stay alive, you know, to be stay undefeated. So, good job to uh, Louisville to you know to stay on top of the mountain. NC State stayed off. Speaking of another undefeated team, stayed off Virginia Tech. NC State still stays eleven and zero. Jakaya Brown Turner had twenty three points today. Elizabeth. Keatley for Javinia Tech had 30 points, 13 22 for shooting, but that wasn't enough to um, overcome uh, NC State. 
Then Missouri, they hung tough for Texas A&M, number 18 in the country, but Texas A&M wins out 70 66. So, a lot of close games, a lot of close calls for these top teams in the women's side of things. And then you go to the men's side, uh, especially for yesterday, Alabama. Still perfect in conference play, beating Mississippi State 81 to 73. And the tide are rolling. And a team <sighs> national uh, well, hell, national media don't really talk about college basketball like that anymore. But a team that is not getting a lot of love. Well, maybe except for Jeff Goodman. But other than that, you know. Team that's under the radar right now, and team that come tournament time you don't want to see. But they keep they uh, keep off a strong Mississippi State team. Houston winning against Temple 68-51. Kansas losing against Oklahoma 75-68. Kansas is not Kansas this year. I don't know if you agree with that with not D Lock, but Kansas is not Kansas. This year, yeah, they, they look a little different. Um, but you know, we've seen that from other teams as well. You know, a lot of different teams. So uh, this year is just all over the place and showing us a lot of different things. If you ask me, and Terry is saying on the chat that you know, oh great, another sport Alabama was dominating in. Well, we shall see. I ain't, I ain't trying to get ahead of myself because you know I've seen this story few times in my life before, so I ain't, I, I ain't trying to get ahead of myself, but hey, they're playing great. But shout out to, <laughs> to the Jim Axis team too, Alabama. Anyways, Maryland with the upset on Minnesota, 63-49. So, you know, big win for the Terps, you know, conference play. Florida State, App. Pretty sure they'd be in the Rakins after this win. Beating uh, Clemson 80-61. So, I expect Clemson to drop out. You know, maybe Forest State move in. You know, we'll see, you know, come tomorrow. UCLA beating um, Stanford beating UCLA in overtime. 73-72. Silva, the... the the Silver Key I was talking about. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Oscar De Silva. 6'9, 230 Ford. Freshman. Averaged 19 points so far this year. Had 26 against UCLA. A guy, D Lock, who was, who's very, he's coming along very well. And a guy, that I see a potential top three pick in this uh, next year's draft, or this upcoming year's draft. He, I think he's that good in my eyes. Be the next great. I mean, you know, teams are going to look for those top, top you know, kind of pieces we talked about. Golden State having uh, a high draft pick, so uh, I would I would expect for um, him to be, you know, one of those early picks and make an impact early. And then Gonzaga, no surprise here. I think the top team in the country. You could argue that with Baylor, but they stay 15-0, being Pacific, 95-49. You know, shout out to Damon Stoudemire, coach at Pacific. Was it? Yeah, Pacific, yes. Another guy um, who Potentially be a top three pick in my eyes. Jalen Shrugs, Suggs of Gonzaga. I think a guy that, you know, big guard, 6'4", you know, he's averaging uh, 14 points, five rebounds, five assists, a real nice combo guard, you know, shooting, shooting 51% from the field. This kid can put it on. I know he ain't had the best game against Pacific, but you know, 
the games I've seen him in, you either go on Kate Cunningham or you can look at Suggs and go that way. De Silva with his rise, you know, he might be itching that conversation. So if you're like a team in the NBA <laughs> with a top lottery pick, or you got the Warriors and luck into a top three pick, you got your plethora of choices right there. Yeah. That's why that, that trade was so big and getting that pick. So it is, you know, we know how it is the first, you know, the first couple of picks. You're trying to get that person that's going to change the franchise. You could be one of them. And then some people say this was an upset. I don't think this was upset. The way, you know, this team has been playing. But Missouri beating Tennessee, 73-64. Kunzo Martin. I love I love Kunzo Martin. I love I, I liked him. I, you know, kept the eye on him. I kept watching him at uh, Southern Illinois. You know, he's been one of my favorite coaches to watch and keep up with. And everybody thought he was kind of silly to take this Missouri job. But he has done a tremendous job. At Missouri, turned that program, you know, around like it once was in the early two thousands with um, uh, what's his name, uh, Quinn Snyder. So, you know, shout out to Conzo Martin. Like I said, I don't think this was an upset against Tennessee. My eyes, but you know, it's whatever. But Missouri. You know, I, I also tweeted out from the Fast Break account on Twitter. If you're not following us there, please do. I think this is the type of game that, you know, come SEC tournament time, will go a long way in seeding. And, you know, with that win, it puts Mizzou in the number two seat right behind Alabama and draws uh, Tennessee to number five. Tied with Kentucky. And you got a Kentucky team that's playing a, a red hot Alabama team on the 26. A red hot Alabama team that just beat them 20 plus at home not too long ago. So, you know, great job. Shout out to Conzo and Missouri for winning that game against Tennessee. Get get in that number two spot, and let's see if they can stay in that number two spot as well. But this has been our show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of stuff we went through today, and thank you for tuning in. Um, we will be back here next week. You know, Super Bowl week, well, media week will be starting. But we'll still be up here live the week after. I know D Law could be down Tampa. <laughs> so Yeah. I mean, I, I we'll definitely still have the show. Um we'll figure out those things. But I'm hey, I definitely will be uh up in the city. Um, you know, trying to see be part of history. So We'll let y'all know if we do the show live or not. It's Super Bowl Sunday, and a lot of people be focused on that. So we'll we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll, we'll talk about there this you know down the line here. But before we head out, I'll shout out to another sponsor, the Sports Rundown. Are you a sports fan but have too much going on in in your life these days to keep up with the twenty four seven sports cycle, or maybe you want are new to sports and want to understand the nuances better. If so, then the Sports Rundown is for you. We are a new podcast that gives you basic professional and collegiate sports news, stats, tidbits, and fun facts by the time you get to work. Start that second cup of coffee or finish walking dog. Enough information to make you dangerous while talking about current sporting events and, and we will teach you something fun along the way. Like about mascots, uniform history, Feel good stories and etc. We even covered the Premier League. 
even though Andrew does a good job of that already. New episodes drop it Monday and Friday, so come give us a listen. And I think that's it there on the sponsors. So, so if y'all in the market for people writing your essays in college, which I wish I had, you know, please do check out Mom is Always Right. Do check out Legacy Financial if you have issues as well. Also, please do check out iesportsradio.com. You can check out our conference preview series or division preview series, excuse me, on the NBA and see if our predictions hold true throughout the season. Mm-hmm. So please do check that out. d how can people find you on social media? Oh, you guys can definitely find me at Black Dash 813. You know that 813 is for the city of Temple. <laughs> um, find me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, my PL or my, you know, I will be tweeting a lot. And post a lot of videos right now. If you check out my Instagram story, it's probably crazy. Also, you see me shed a tear a couple of times. It's okay for you to laugh. But, uh, yeah, so you can definitely find me on, on those. Um, let them know where they can find you at. Uh, you can find me on the Crooks Process on Instagram and Facebook. That's my other podcast I do on the side. So please do find me there. I'll keep up to date on when I drop shows and whatnot. Also, you can find me on Twitter at Spawn4288. That is Spawn4288. Also, please do follow us on Fastbreak at IESR. That is Fastbreak IESR. Also, like I said, check out the website at, at IESportsRadio.com. Please check out from there. Also, tomorrow on the docket on here on IESports Radio, Chicago Weekly with Adam Karnick. Our Chicago-based still uh, based show. I'm pretty sure Adam's gonna be talking about the Bulls. You know they've been playing pretty well here recently, except when you know against the Lakers, they dropped late an egg against that. But I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm probably clear. <laughs> so, you know, I know he'd be talking about the Bulls. You know, hockey back up in action with the Blackhawks. You know, spring training about to come up. So I know he'd be talking about the Cubs and. White Sox here. So please do give that Adam a, a listen to. Next, at 5 p.m. E, uh, Pacific Time, 8 Eastern, let's wind by sports with Mike Pat. Mike will be talking mostly things, most things DC in a sense, but talk about everything of sports world in general. Along with a glass of wine, or maybe a beer, or maybe something else. So we'll see. But you got to tune in to find out. So do check out Mac, uh, Mike tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 Pacific. Then a new show here on the I Sports Radio Network. Second to none, all things SEC with Blake Saucer, Jackson Kelly, and Adam Ziski and Chris Magrum. All things SEC, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. So if you're an SEC fan, so tune into that. They probably talk everything from football to gymnastics. So please tune in for that. And finally, the main event for Monday night, The Unfiltered Truth with Phil Jones and Phil Robinson. If you love the Raiders, this is your show right here. And I'm pretty sure, you know, with the new hires and you know, new hire in San Diego and the potential of Matt Stafford maybe get traded to the Broncos. I pretty sure that's what I was thinking the same thing. I, I just, I'd rather see him go to the Broncos than the Colts. I, I yeah, pray I yeah. pray he goes to the Broncos. <laughs> I pray it goes to the Broncos. I was like, ooh, please. Uh, Philip Rivers is going to coach high school football. And then and they're not bringing Brissett back. I said, ooh, please, please don't coach. Don't do this. Please. I want to say, I know, right? I want to say the top of the division for one more year. Please. So do check them out. 
They come on 9 30 p.m. Eastern, 6 30 Pacific. They stream live here on speaker and on, and on stream yard as well. So please do check them out. Like I said, this has been our show, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be back here next week. Hopefully, Coach K has a good has a good week and be stamping on people. But till then, ladies and gentlemen, we're out. Deuces. <laughs>